What is up, YouTube? Ace Poker back again, and we're here, Vegas. The room is just amazing. I'll give you guys a quick room tour in a second. Um, I know a lot of you guys that follow me on Instagram, Twitter, saw my deep tournament run. Surprise, I played my first live tournament out here and I made the final table. No spoilers, this is not this video. This is just gonna be some quick 2-5 cash down here at the win. I did not want to let my editor edit that video for me. No disrespect, he edited my last video and it was awesome. And he's gonna edit this one here today. But I wanted to edit my first tournament cash. I wanted to just make it special and just relive it all and just do it all myself. So that will be coming out next week. So definitely stay tuned for that. But just enjoy the cash today. I'm gonna head down there right now. It is 7 p.m. Vegas, basically 10 p.m. back home for me, Jersey time. But let's get right into it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Really quickly, I did wanna just say shout out to Nutstyle. I'm gonna be wearing their hoodie while I'm out here. They helped send me out here, definitely appreciate the help. They have a super cool poker platform, definitely much cooler than a lot of the apps. They have play to earn where, you know, the more hands you play, the more rewards you get. Definitely check out their app, follow their Twitter, support them for supporting me, and let's get into today's video. All right, welcome back fans of the vlog. As you guys see, we made it here at Las Vegas. This has been a place I have been so excited to play for such a long time. I've seen so many vlogs and so many sessions here. Not specifically at the win as much, but I'm very excited to jump right into it. And for the very first hand, we look down at Ace-9 Offsuit. I know you guys never say I 3-bet bluff, yada yada yada, but here we go. We're on the $10 straddle. The player who just sat down to my left raises to $35. It gets back to me, and like I said, I've got an Ace, I've got some blockers to some good hands. So I just had to 3-bet this one up to $120, planning to just take it down right now. Trying to just steal it here and show this guy... What is going on at this new table? Boss him around a little bit, but he's having none of it. He decides to flat call. There's a lot of hands he could have here. King, queen suited, pocket fours through pocket tens. Pocket jacks might re-raise, but they might call. But just me and him are going to a board here of jack, six, five. Not the best, but not the worst, and we'll still have some really strong hands here. I was super confused in this spot because if you guys saw, my opponent checked it was not on him, it was on me. He's in position here and he checked. He doesn't look like a professional player or somebody who's doing this on purpose. I think he genuinely thought it was on him and checked. Then he tried to play it off like he was checking his cards. I think that's a sign of weakness. I think, like I said, he might have king queen suited or just one of those hands that's just not very strong here. So that might have influenced my decision a little bit, but I was planning on c-betting anyways. So I decided to c-bet here like I would with any of my strong hands to $85. And my opponent thinks not too long and decides to flick in the call. So was this an angle? Because it seems like he's got something that he's willing to go with here. Why would you check instantly? I don't know. Just super weird. Let's see what the turn brings us. We're going to a turn which looks pretty decent. It's a pretty big brick. And now I want to size up here. I want to go pretty big because if my opponent makes the call... I pretty much know that I am screwed and I'm going to have to shut down any river. So I decided to choose a sizing of $210. And as you guys can see, my opponent thinks about it for not too much time and puts in the call. So it looks like he's got a good hand, might have a strong jack, even though the only strongest jacks we'll have here is jack 10 suited and queen jack suited. Don't think he's calling a three bet with king jack suited or ace jack suited. If he does, good for him. He'll probably take this one down. The river comes at yet another jack, which is just an awful card, and I was planning on shutting down on pretty much any river, but this one especially, if he was putting his foot down with one of those medium to high pocket pairs, he is not folding, and especially if he has a jack, he's not folding. So I check, maybe we'll be good against an unbelieving king-queen suited, but no, my opponent shows not one, but two queens. Yeah, he's never folding, and you know, must be nice to get pocket queens on your very first hand you sit down. But good for him, and he's taking this one down. Oh yeah, don't you love when your opponent wins a pot and then stacks all their chips just like this? Uh, extra tilting. It's pretty clear this guy is just here to gamble, and he had queens. Nice. 
All right, don't blink or you'll miss this hand. We look down at Ace-King offsuit. All of you guys know how much I absolutely love this hand, right? I also just realized I never showed my hand, so here's an Ace-King from a different hand. There's an open to $30. We decide to 3-bet this one up to $80 out of the small blood. I think I can go even a little bit bigger here to 90 100 even 110 even 120 out of position. Gets back to the player who raised. I'm hoping for a fold maybe a call, but no, my opponent doesn't do any of those options. He decides to four bet this one up to $320. Yeah, disgusting. And thinking about this now out of the moment after the hand, I think it's pretty clear my opponent's either going to have ace king himself, aces, kings, queens, or jacks. I don't really think he's doing this with pocket tens. I don't think he's doing this with ace queen suited unless he's a nut job or ace two three four five suited. So how did those hands hold up against ace king? Well, we're basically flipping against jacks and queens. We're basically dead against kings and aces, and we're maybe gonna chop with ace king. So, uh, you know, should I call? Should I go all in? Mm, not really sure here. We're out of position. I think if best case scenario you're flipping with a hand, like there's no hand that I'm dominating besides ace-queen, but like I said, I just don't think that people live enough are doing this with ace-queen suited. So I think you can just pretty comfortably fold having only invested $80 in the pot. It might be different if, say, I was the one that was putting in the 3-bet to, say, 250 and then my opponent jammed for like 500 then maybe you can have some call-offs, but I think in this spot, you can just let ace-king go, but stubbornly in the moment, and like I said, fresh off my tournament win, my tournament high, maybe in tournament mode where ace-king is just, you know, you're getting it in basically all the time. I decide to go all in for the $550 I have. My opponent snap calls, obviously, he's not going anywhere, but he shows pocket kings. All right, so like I said, one of the hands that we are just destroyed by, so we need one of the three aces left in the deck, and if you guys couldn't tell already by how this hand was going, we do not hit it. So only about an hour of live play, only two hands shown in here. We played a couple other ones in the middle, but we are out. But, you know, this video is short. We're not ending just yet. We're headed to the rebuy station. Hell yeah. Minus $1,000. We have some work to do. Let's get after it and let's keep going. Alrighty, what a better hand than 910 suited, a suited connector to climb us out of this hole and get us back on the winning track. The hijack decides to open to $20, the cutoff calls. I call on the button and the big blind calls as well, so we're going four ways to a flop in which, oh yeah baby, there's our flush draw, let's get after it. Everyone checks to me surprisingly, so I decide to bet out for $45, not too large, not too small, just about half pot here, and only the initial raiser makes the call. So I'm not really sure what he's got when he's check calling, but let's see a turn. Hopefully we can smash the flush. Nope, but we turn the open-ended straight draw as well as our flush draw. We've got the world, and now the initial raiser checks again. Again, not really sure what type of hands he's just check calling, but I do think if I bet here, there's a good chance he might raise, and that would put me in a gross spot, and I would probably have to throw away all this equity. So I do debate checking back. It would actually be very sneaky and disguised if I hit my draw on the river, but that is also if I hit my draw, and today is not going that way for me. So I decide to bet, and I want to choose a sizing that's a bit bigger, but also looks like I am just milking for value like I have a set. If I did have a set here, I would also go pretty massive. I'd probably bet 150, 170. Maybe I'd even mix in an over bet here, betting 210, 250. But I choose a sizing that's $120, and now my opponent hops in the tank. So, like I said, not sure what hands he's check calling on the flop. And then here he checks, I bet, and he hops in the tank. But after a while, a while of thought, a few minutes actually, he decides to flick in the call. So, we're gonna head to a river. And if you couldn't tell how today's going, we brick our draw, a complete brick two on the river. Today is just not our day, and now my opponent checks for a third time. Like I said, on the turn, just very confused. It seems like he honestly is very weak. I mean, he could have been thinking about raising a set or a super strong hand, but I'm just going to hope that he is very weak here, and I'm going to decide to bet. I don't have to go too large, but I do have to go a bit on the larger side to try to get a weak jack to fold such as jack 9, jack 7, jack 10, maybe even queen jack will fold to a third barrel here. 
but I do think he's going to have a lot of ace queen of diamonds, ace king of diamonds, ace ten of diamonds, etc, etc. That's just going to fold to a bet anyways, so I decided to toss out $210, and now my opponent starts thinking once again, and my heart is going crazy. But we don't have to wait too long as my opponent releases and lets it go. We breathe a sigh of relief, and finally one single thing goes our way today. If we can't make a hand, we'll just have to force it. We then appear to have a little bit of run good as every dealer change here, they're doing a bomb pot. We all put in $30 and I flop top two pair on a pretty wet and connected board. So I decide to just bet out right out of the small blind for $30 and I pick up three callers. So we're going to a turn hoping to boat up, I guess, and it completes the flush draw. So we're basically done with that. But I check and everyone checks around, so I don't know, maybe we can boat up again on the river. The river pairs the board, just not the card we're looking for. I check, somebody bets out for $50, and everyone else folds to me, so I actually debate maybe calling here? But I just think better of it and fold, and the player later told me he had a flush, so... Ah, the run bad just can't evade us. Ah, for this end, we look down at our good old friend Ace King, but this time it's suited, so they're trying to get me to play it. I refuse to do anything crazy with this hand. I limp, you know, honestly, I'm just trying to hit the nut flush and just flush over flush somebody. Like, honestly, F this hand. The player to my left raises it up pretty big to $30, and I am the only customer. Lucky me, right? And oh, look at this. We flop a king. Oh, you know, we don't three bet. We don't go crazy. And here's the king. It's just like it's just messing with us. It's toying with us. I check to the initial razor and he bets out for $40, so nothing to do but make the call. It'll be absolutely disgusting here and just a 6-6 six, six setup if he has aces, kings, king, queen. There's some hands that beat us here, so I guess we do have to proceed with caution considering this also is ace, king and all. We're going to a turn which looks alright as we pick up a flush draw, so you know, maybe we could hit our flush. But I check and flow to the initial razor because with my luck he probably has aces or kings or king queen or maybe even queens here. And now he decides to bet out for $90. So like I said I could spring the trap and raise here but don't want to go crazy. This player is literally, I'm not kidding you, reading a book as he plays. And he's only playing when he decides the hand's good enough to take a step away from his book which has been literally like three hands since I sat down here. So I am just playing this as cautious as I possibly could. And we're going to a river. Maybe I could hit a flush and cooler him and win a massive one. But nope, it comes a brick. And I check. And now he goes to reach for some chips yet again. And I'm like, oh my goodness, don't go massive, don't go massive. And he cuts out and bets $210. I just sigh and throw in the chip. And oh my goodness, look, we were free rolling him. He has ace king. It actually tried to give us the win with a heart on the turn, but... We're gonna chop this one up, and who doesn't love a good old chopped pot, right? At least I'm not at my home game and losing a million dollars to rake, and, uh, you know, wow. Still can't win with Ace King. The best I can do is chop, huh? <laughs> Alright, I mean, I have a player at my table that's reading a book. I have an old man coffee, literally a guy at the end of my table that looks like he is about to croak that is drinking a coffee. And he limps. Oh my goodness, I wonder what he has. Yeah, oh my goodness. We look down at Pocket Queens. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to raise this one and play into his trap. I decided to raise this one up to $25. And what do you know? He looks so happy to 3-bet me to $100. I literally just want to fold now. Like, he's either aces, kings, or ace, king. Probably he's not. He probably just folds ace, king. His range is literally just aces and kings. So I decided to put in the call and, you know, maybe hit a queen. Nah. Flop is 10, 6, 7, rainbow. How in the world am I going to get away from this? Spoiler, I'm not. The old man decides to bet $100 again, and it's just so freaking clear he's got aces or kings. But, you know, when the world sets you up, sometimes you just have to let it smack you across the face, huh? So he bets $100 and I just flat call again. Actually, I'm literally praying to see an ace or a king. I mean, really a queen, then I'll win all of his money. But what do you know? We see a deuce. You know, only when we need the bricks, they don't come. But here, brick, 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 brick. He takes a while to look down at his chips and, you know, do his best acting job, count out his chips. And he bets about $150 with literally like $125 left. So I give it the good old all in and he snap calls and you hear me say uh, aces, kings, I mean it's pretty freaking obvious. 
And then I mumble some, you know, this is the ridiculous, I hate my life, and... Aces, kings, I have queens. Yeah, I mean, so fucking stupid. I mumble some, this is disgusting, I hate my life, <laughs> under my breath, and decide to flick in the call. The run out comes, and he flips over pocket aces. Yeah, just so gross. I mean, just so gross. How does it just keep setting me up like this? Uh, it's just, it's just disgusting. But like I said, sometimes you've just got to let the deck hit you in the face and take it like a champ and move on and just keep on battling. And that's all you could do sometimes. Just keep on going, soldier. Just two hands later, we pick up Queen Jack offsuit on the button. Let's play into this whole I'm tilted, I hate my life, I cannot believe I just got stacked, and try to just keep our cool and stack somebody else. But obviously, like I said, to the table, it's going to look like I'm pretty fuming. So I decided to raise this one up to $20 and only get one caller. And what do you know? Jack Jack 7. Wow. With a diamond draw. He checks it over to me. And like I said, uh, I'm going to be quote unquote tilted and just look like I'm fuming. No way in hell I am checking this one back. He can definitely call me with a wide variety of hands. He can maybe even try to bluff raise me. Who knows, so I just try to nonchalantly throw out $25. And after a little tiny bit of thought, my opponent makes the call. So it's looking on the up and up. Let's see a good turn. And yeah, four of hearts qualifies as a good turn. My opponent checks to me, and now I just toss $60 in the middle. Definitely looks like I'm bluffing. Let's go. Maybe he can raise. This will be amazing. Maybe he even has a weaker jack. Could I be running that good? That would be amazing, huh? Oh my goodness. Those are raising chips. My opponent raises me to $120. Like I said, let's play into this whole act. I give it my own best Hollywood. Think about it for a little while. Throw some confused expressions on my face. Definitely looks like I'm on a diamond draw or I have aces and kings. I just put in the smooth call. Hopefully he can bluff off that entire stack on the river. We've got him right where we want him. Wow, wow, wow. There's another one of those bricks that we asked for. The two of spades, the diamonds don't get there. The straight draws don't get there. We've got the nutter butters. Hell yeah. Now my opponent takes a shaky hand to one chip and says all in. This is what we've been waiting for. I snap call and my opponent shows... Oh, wow. Yeah, this is fucking ridiculous. How much is it? Jack four. Are you fucking kidding me? Jack four. We had him right where we wanted him and he turned a fucking four? What kind of sick fucking joke is this? I mean, really, it, it like... Am I being pranked? I, I have to just look around and ask where the cameras are. This is literally insane. Have you guys ever seen a worse stretch of two hands back to back like this? Queens into aces, queen jack into jack four. We both flop trips. He thinks I'm tilted. He's going to give his whole entire stack away. What's even worse is he just needles me. He says, oh yeah, I've got to play the Robbie. I want to literally say, go f yourself. How about that? I mean, Jesus Christ, this is insane. If I did not run good in that tournament two days ago, I feel like I've used all my run good in it. If I didn't cash massive in that, and stay tuned for that next week, by the way, I would seriously flip over the table right now. This is insane. I am disgusted. I had about $200 left. I picked up and said nothing. I just took my chips. I think I even just went and played roulette with them because I was so pissed. But, oh, my God goodness man this is insane let's head to my outro uh well uh in my couple days here so far i have felt the highs of the highs and the lows of the lows um like i said in the intro my tournament that will be coming out next week insane i ran the best i've ever ran in my life I'm not just gonna spoil anything, but you know, was jamming, getting called by one pip less every time. I just skated by so easily. Things were awesome. It was my my second day here, my first event, my first, you know, I didn't play cash the first day, just relaxed. Um, and after that, like apparently, I guess I used every ounce of luck that I could possibly have in this world 
because I got absolutely shit on. Cash game today, Ace King torched. Tournament today, Ace King torched. We lose in the tournament today that I didn't film. It's not going to be a session. I, I was only going to film it if I made a deep run. I hopped into a $1,600 bounty. I lost set over set, eights to aces. Yeah, aces should win anyways, but when you flop a set, you think you're pretty good, right? Yeah, no, just like cash today. Then I, I hop in cash. I'm like, you know what? Played six hours of tournament. I want to hop in cash. It's going to go good. Yeah, no, an old hag. Sorry if you're old. That just sitting on their phone, literally played one hand the entire time. I raise queens. I mean, you guys saw the hand. I'm not going to freaking explain it again, but what the... Whatever. I was up 400, then I was down 300, whatever. I could rebound. You know, perfect setup. I look like I'm on tilt with the jacks, with the queen jack hand. I look like I'm on tilt. Uh, I, I just played it perfectly and just bink four. Like, you know, what, what, what else? Like, ha. What did I do? Like, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. How do you just bink a four? I, I just don't understand. But whatever. Sorry for the rant. You guys are, like I said, you guys are always going to get all the emotions. You know, all my, oh, happy emotions and all my pissed off emotions. So I'm going to fucking sleep. Oh, my goodness. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to play a cash session at Bellagio. That'll be probably like two videos after this, three videos after this. Hopefully that goes a little bit better. Um, just, oh, my goodness, man. Like... Ugh, like, ugh, gotta shake this off. But as always, hope you guys have a good day and peace out. Hopefully you guys get a little bit luckier than I do. <laughs> peace.